Um, Ideas change and are constantly evolving. There was once a time where women were believed to only concern themselves with handling domestic tasks in the home. Most of us in the U.S. know today that that isn't the case. Times have changed, and with it have the ideas that are held in our society. Women can be scholars, scientists, doctors, professionals, in any field. Yet when we take a look at women in STEM, why does it seem like there is still a long way to go till we reach equity and equality? As of 2017, the number of women who held degrees in STEM fields was only 37%. While that number may vary depending on the field, there is still a noticeable difference between the two. Research at the University of Memphis done by educational psychology researcher Yong Hong Jae Zhu said, The findings suggest that the underrepresentation of women is more convincingly explained by an academic culture that provides women fewer opportunities, limited support, and inequity in leadership rather than gender-based differences. I'm Elaine Landy. Um, I teach math here at the University of Michigan. All in all, I've been teaching 10, 15 years, but I've been here at U of M for the last four years. So my name is Madel Madel Leal. I'm actually a second year at the School of Information, getting my master's in information, and I'm specializing in UX design and data analytics. So when I was working on my master's, I don't know how else to describe it except for it was just awkward. In the department there, it was all men. There was one female who happened to be on maternity leave when I was there, which initially I didn't really think much of. But there was a few instances where it just made the whole situation uncomfortable. As a master's student, I was working as adjunct faculty, which essentially meant I didn't get paid very much, didn't have health care, had to pay for school. and the person in charge of determining who got the graduate student instructor positions, which covered all those things, was not very approachable in the first place, but also would have discussions with the few other female math graduate students about, do you have a boyfriend, are you planning to have kids? Um, just things that were like inappropriate and irrelevant. And actually when I started my master's, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll do a PhD. But after being in that department for two years, I just wanted to get out. So like if you walk in a room, right, and then there's, a, you know, you find yourself you're one out of 10, like one female out of 10 males, like uh, that sort of kind of like, it makes you feel, well, it made me feel some type of way you're uncomfortable, right? There's not a lot of representation. I can see myself and another person. And then you add the fact that it's, that I'm Latina, and so then we're even lower, right? I think there's like 2% of Latinas are actually in the STEM and tech world. Um, and so, although it wasn't like a, like an explicit sort of like interaction that I've had, it's just being in that space where it's just myself and there's predominantly males. Um, I felt some type of way about it, you know? I can't always pinpoint exactly what it is, um, but I was just like, no, I'm done. I wanna get out of here. Um, and it actually wasn't until I came to U of M in the School of Education when I realized how departments can be that I realized what a hostile just feeling there was in the department and things around that. Um, so that definitely veered me away, although I kind of came back in an interesting way. This academic culture diminishes the desire that many women hold to pursue a career in the STEM fields from a young age. The lack of opportunities given to women stunt their career from the beginning of their education. In the same study done at the University of Memphis, it was found that in reality, such structural related gender biases mean that women have a smaller chance of being hired. The small group of women who start faculty careers in STEM suffer isolation, marginalization, stereotyping, insufficient support, delay in advancement, and other adversity at work. Having multiple perspectives from different, whether it's gender, backgrounds, history, where you come from, the more different ways you can come into a problem thinking about it, it just, it opens up the possibilities extremely. And if you talk to mathematicians, they'll say, oh, a huge part of my job is creativity, thinking out of the box, um, thinking of all these things. And when a field is dominated by any one gender or race, that significantly narrows like the people's way of thinking. There's a lot of men in the field, um, and so um, I, even at the School of Information, I think it's predominantly male than female ratio. And so when you have um, 
departments or subjects that are very concentrated, whether it's, you know, white and Asian males or, you know, some extremes, it's completely different makeups. Um, it doesn't encourage students of different backgrounds or different genders to pursue that because they don't see themselves in the people that they're working with. You know, as I'm getting ready to enter the workforce, um, I'm very aware that there's going to be um, just maybe just myself and maybe like all other uh, men in the room. Um, and so, yeah, I, I've experienced it implicitly in, in certain pockets and certain spaces. Continued support for more women in academia today can help ensure that future generations can see themselves better represented. In academia specifically, the educational benefits of diversity and inclusivity are concrete and significant. Motivation to consider multiple perspectives, which is an important skill in teamwork, as well as interdisciplinary research, has been shown to be related to classroom and campus experiences with diversity. Creating environments where women can prosper in STEM is the next step in the right direction. Being new in tech um, and being Latina, um, it, it has been a challenge. Um, but I, I think I see other Latinas that are also kind of paving the way for, for me, myself, and others behind me. Um, I always feel a sense of pride to see like other women of color infiltrating these spaces. So I think if we can continue creating that pipeline um, and that thread, it's important for the other younger Latinas or other women of color um, can also feel inspired to, to be in these spaces, even though it, it could be uncomfortable and we can face discrimination. Um, it's, it's important to have this representation in these spaces. When you do find people to connect with, strengthen that connection and use those people as resources and mentors. So if you find a, you know, if it's only one or two females in your department or maybe one or two people of the same, you know, ethnic or racial background as you, and you click with them and you work with them, um, don't hesitate to use that to help you continue and persist and get into the field, and even to understand the difficulties being a minority of whatever sort that is. Um, because just knowing what you might face makes a big difference in being able to deal with it when it starts coming at you. So perhaps one day, the perspectives of those who have been historically silenced can be heard, because right now we may very well be lacking in visionary scope for the future to come. Thank you.